i sa chat box natin uh, we have uh, participants all over the Philippines as well as in Singapore Middle East meron din po even in US meron din po tayo mga viewers so good day po sa inyo lahat at good evening din po okay so we are we are now in our last day of our webinar lecture series uh, last day lang po but definitely this won't be the last webinar series ng PICE so to start off uh, Sir Pres Presbong for the welcoming remarks. Oh, yeah. Sir Eric, thank you very much. So hello everyone. So uh, again, a very warm day no? to all of us here uh, in the Philippines. I want to say about countries, you know? but uh, you know, uh, this is the last day as what uh, Director Eric said. This is the last day of our webinar lecture series. And I uh, would like to welcome everyone. Uh, and uh, also would like to welcome our speaker, Engineer Adam Abinales, our moderator, Engineer uh, Ison. Uh, on behalf of the PIC National Board of Directors, I would like to express our gratitude for being with us uh, on this sixth and the last day of session of our PIC webinar lecture series, which is now focused on structural engineering. Yeah, one of the areas of specialization of civil engineering where most of our civil engineers are really interested, you know. Actually, ito yung session na wala pa 30 minutes na in-upload yung uh, uh, opening of the registration, ubus kagad. Grabe, ubus yung slots tagal. I hope uh, everyone would participate, no? Uh, Aaten talaga during this time. So this webinar is actually the PIC's new normal, no? In delivering additional learnings to all of us. Though we are on crisis brought about by this COVID-19 virus, but learning must not cease or stop, no? Ni gaya dun sa, you know, but it must, uh, during and after this pandemic, we should continue learning. No? We believe that it is our personal responsibility as professionals to always learn and continue learning and adopt innovations just like, just like this webinar no? to ensure our continuing professional development. So, sinabi nga ng ating uh, chairman, ng uh, chair ng professional Regulatory Board of Civil Engineering, si Ma'am Praxi, no? Bernardo, with or without CPD units, we should continue learning. Okay? So also, this webinar is our way of showing our appreciation for the support of all our 116 chapters worldwide to the PIC's initiatives in helping government and our people fight this COVID-19 pandemic. Our gratitude and salute goes also to our, all our civil engineer frontliners and also those backliners or those civil engineers working hard also behind the scenes. At this point, I would like to thank again you know, our resource speaker, Engineer Abinales, our moderator panelist, Engineer Eason, uh, actually, Engineer Eason is the chair of the PIC Specialty Division for Structural Engineering and uh, also the president of Association of Structural, Structural Engineers of the Philippines. Uh, so also to the PIC National Board of Directors, the lead committee for this webinar lecture series, Interspecialty Group Committee with the six specialty divisions of PICE chaired by Director Eric Sison, the Student Affairs Committee, chaired by Director uh, Aldrin Uy, uh, and our Secretariat for making this webinar lecture series possible. Lastly, for everybody, as I've said during the past days of our webinar, I wish you all a holy, a prayerful life acknowledging our Almighty and our prayers for a miracle, miraculous no, end of this pandemic. pandemic. A healthy a life away from sickness while obeying the protocols of government to stay safe. And lastly, a happy 
happy with our lives, with our family, and happy with what we are doing day by day. And right now, happy with our webinar session. With that, have a comfortable seat and just relax while learning from our speaker on this webinar session today. Eric? Thank you, Thank Press. You, very, ano talaga tayo, dapat happy. Happy talaga tayo lagi dapat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, before we start with the talk, um, again, uh, Secretary, can you please share the screen para dun po sa house rules? Just again, a reminder to all the participants. Uh, so far, habang sinishare po yung screen, uh, we have already sent the link for those who attend the uh, day one, day day one, day three, and day four na webinar. So I think some of you have already gotten the link for the evaluation form and the materials. So ano lang po, uh, just abangan nyo lang po yung email nyo, check your emails because we have released already the link for day one, day three, and day four. Day two, day five. Uh, ulang pa rin po yung mga material so wait for it lang po and then day 6 po after po nito uh, bibigay po sa amin yung presentation materials sa speaker and then we will again send it to you so just a reminder house rules lang po natin for this webinar uh, all the audio and video of the participants shall be muted in order for the participants to focus on the presentation and the speaker not to be disturbed during his presentation all questions, please post it on the Q&A. Uh, take note po sa Q&A nyo po i-post yung questions nyo, whether it is te a technical question related to the topic or admin question related po sa PIC or this webinar. Sa Q&A nyo po siya i-post para na monitor po namin ng moderator. Kasi sa chat box po, mahirap po mag-back read pag sa chat box. So sa Q&A nyo po i-post yung questions nyo. We encourage you to post your questions even before the while the presentation is ongoing so that the, uh, we can monitor and we can take note of all those questions, mas screen na po namin uh, para hindi yung ma-flood yung Q&A box right after the presentation. We'll try to answer all your questions uh, as long as we have enough time. We, uh, we end at 5 o'clock around that time. So we try to accommodate all questions from 3 to 5 po. We'll accommodate as much questions as we can. Those questions that were not answered or were not addressed, please email it at uh, zoomwebinar.pic at gmail.com and uh, hopefully the speaker will be able to address your questions via email na lang po. Again, this is broadcasted uh, through the FB page of uh, PICE. Search nyo lang po, P Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, Inc. Do not forget the ink. And then uh, share nyo rin po sa mga uh, Facebook pages nyo para po maka-attend din po yung hindi naka-register. Now, for day one, day, two, day three, and day four, as well as the other links that would be sent to you, uh, pag kinlik nyo po yun, meron pong Google form, no evaluation form of that particular seminar. Please fill it up and submit. Then pag submit nyo po, may lalabas po na link in front of your screen. You click that link para po makuha nyo lahat ng mga, uh, para po nyo makuha lahat ng materials for that particular seminar. So, just make sure, wag, wag nyo lang po basta i-close yung uh, browser nyo pagka-submit nyo po. Make sure you wait for that link and then you click it. Now, some questions po kasi nangyayari. Uh, minsan hindi rin makakulit. So, just uh, try nyo lang po because sometimes pag sabay-sabay po nagko-connect, minsan na, na, napa-flood po yung site. So, ano lang po, try-try nyo lang po. Eventually, makakonect po kayo dun sa pag-download ng poll tsaka ng link. Uh, only, registered only registered attendees, meaning those who registered and attended that particular seminar will receive the certificate. The certificate is not included in the link ng evaluation and ng materials. It would be sent later on once we have validated the, your attendance as well as the evaluation form. For those who have not yet, um, those who have not yet updated their membership profile, uh, ayan, meron po, uh, sa item number 8, nandiyan po yung link, please click and sign up and update your membership profile. So this is also part of PICE's membership campaign to update your uh, membership profile. And lastly, meron pa po ba? 
So yun lang po. So far yun lang po yung attendance. Ayun uh, lang po yung house rules. Later on, I have an announcement after the presentation. So, okay po. So that's the house rules for our webinar. So I'd like to turn you over to our moderator. He is, as, as mentioned by our president, he is uh, the current president of uh, Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines and also a former vice president of PICE and the chair of the specialty group ng structural engineering ng interspecialty group po ng PICE. So I'd like to welcome our moderator for today, Engineer Ronaldo Ison. Uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Bong. Uh, good day, everyone. Before I introduce our speaker, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the PRC Chair, uh, Engineer Praxedes Bernardo. Uh, okay. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, thank you for gracing our webinar. Um, so our speaker today will be talking about the seismic design of RC beams for special moment resisting frames in accordance with the NSCP 2015. Our speaker is a distinguished uh, civil structural engineer. Uh, he is vice chair of the Specialty Division for Structural Engineering. And he is also the principal engineer of Abinales Associates Engineers Plus Consultants. No? Our speaker also is uh, past president of the ASEP and presently a current director. So everyone, let's uh, all listen to the lecture of Engineer Adam Abinales. Hey. Thank you, Rani. Thank you, uh, Press Bob. Thank you, uh, uh, Eric, partner, ma'am. Thank you for... Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank Hello, you very much. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I share ko na yung screen ko, no? Okay, sige. Okay, uh, good, good day everyone, uh, morning, afternoon, evening, uh, welcome to the PIC uh, ISG online lecture series. So today uh, I would be discussing about seismic design of RC beams uh, according to NECP 2015, uh, RC beam of spatial moment frame to be specific. <clears throat> okay. So, to start with, no, um, let me present to you the course outline for the uh, for the uh, today's uh, discussion. Uh, I would be uh, discussing uh, about the references and the codes and standards that we are using whenever we design our structures here in the Philippines. Uh, what are the different types of structure system that we have, especially in the country, and uh, what is really the intent of uh, of our code, particular for and then we focus on the on the main highlight question of the frame. Now, this is really a lecture in a way that I pre I will I prepared some uh, a sort of a design lab wherein I would be presenting uh, some sort of calculations on how we go about. Uh, uh, I see that this is a special moment frame. Uh, preceding lectures, the topics somehow related to uh, what we are experiencing right now, no? This public health crisis, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, they talk about the new normal. So maybe for, for structural engineering, we really have to be ready for that new normal. Because uh, if in case we go back to our offices uh, after this uh, ECQ, and hopefully the, this will be lifted on May 15 or after May 15, and then uh, we go back to our workplaces. So maybe the new normal that we would be encountering or will be uh, doing is before you, before you go to your workplace, you should be wearing your face mask you should be uh, practicing the physical distancing. Then before uh, getting inside your office uh, workplace, you have to step on uh, some uh, rug with uh, disinfection and then uh, hand wash and then uh, do some uh, uh, application of alcohol or whatever, not to disinfect yourself. And then uh, you take your seat. 
and make sure that you also observe uh, physical distancing in the offices. So basically, as, a, as an individual person, our uh, main concern for the new normal would be uh, looking after our personal hygiene, individual personal hygiene. As a structural engineer, maybe you would be uh, asking, uh, how can this pandemic no, would really affect us? Well, definitely, if in case you would be going to, the, to a project site, again, you really have to observe this new normal. You have to be very aware, no, conscious at all times, that you observe all these health protocols, personal hygiene that we are asked no, to do. So it's really a new uh, thing that we don't use uh, we don't get used to use, not before. And then, same thing, if you will be at a meeting, no? face to face, then you really have to observe that uh, physical distancing or the new normal would be uh, having online meeting. Now, so basically, that's how I can relate no? as, as a structural engineer and as an, an individual person uh, after this uh, pandemic. Now, let me present to you the references and standards uh, that we normally use, no? or that we in the Philippines use in this country um, when we design our structures. We have our National Structure of the Philippines, and the latest edition is uh, seventh edition, 2015. Actually, the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines is working now on the eighth edition uh, wherein uh, there would be a lot of uh, changes no? uh, in this uh, particular uh, edition. Now, when we talk about uh, reinforced concrete, we focus our design. We look at chapter four, the structural concrete. <clears throat> so uh, the ASEP is actually through its uh, CPD committee. We are uh, now working on coming up with a manual for the reinforced concrete design, no? especially low to medium rise buildings with special moment resisting frame. Now this will be purely based on chapter four. Now this is something that we can uh, uh, help our practicing uh, civil engineers who would like to do structural design or even uh, those practicing structural uh, engineering already. This is, uh, this is uh, something that we can uh, offer them, no? um, uh, helping these people, especially those uh, uh, engineers, uh, civil engineers who are teaching uh, structural design in uh, in school. As we all know, our our uh, chapter four of the uh, NACP 2015 uh, was reference to the uh, building code requirements for structural concrete ACI 318 <clears throat> We talk about structural system. In the Philippines, no, these are the, I would say, the structure system which are very common. We have the bearing wall system, which is described in section 208 of, uh, of uh, section 208.4.6.1 of our NACP 2015. We have the section uh, 208.4.6.2, which is all about building frame system. And we have the moment resisting frame. Then we have the dual system, and of course, we have the other system, wherein either you have the cantilever column system or undefined system or other structures. When we talk about bearing wall system, we simply have something like this. Everything is your wall, or you have the bearing walls. Now, of course, this does not have a complete vertical load carrying capacity or a real, a load carrying space frame. The bearing walls or the bracing stands will provide the support for all of the uh, gravity loads. Likewise, the bearing wall system will resist the lateral force uh, uh, system. <clears throat> when we talk, uh, talk about building frame system, this has a complete space frame, but the space frame will only support the gravity loads. Whereas the lateral forces or the resistance to loads, the lateral forces would be taken care of by the shear wall or the brace frame. <clears throat> in a moment resisting frame, 100% the space frame support the gravity loads and at the same time provide resistance to the lateral forces primarily by the flexural action of the members. And the space frame in which members turn and joints resist forces through flexure, 
shift and axial forces. The moment resisting uh, frame system uh, has no height limitation in zone four when using spatial moment resisting frame. But note that when we talk about moment resisting frame, we also have such thing as ordinary and intermediate moment resisting frame, uh, which may be assigned to zone four. Section 208.4.6.4 is all about dual system. It has a complete space frame, also supporting the gravity loads, and the shear walls and the brace frames, and the moment resisting frames provide resistance to the lateral loads. Wherein, well, in some references, yeah, it is stated that the moment resisting frames shall be designed to resist 25% of these uh, earthquake forces or the design base shear, both shall be designed to carry the design base shear according to their respective rigidities. And the other systems, we have the cantilever column system or the non-building structural system, wherein uh, I would say these are something like uh, elevated water tank, billboard or tower structures, and of course, undefined system. <clears throat> Section 418, NACP 2015, is all about spatial detailing, leading to ductility. You might be asking why? Section 401 to Section 417 and Section 419 up to Section 425 would not be sufficient to, to be able to come up with the earthquake resistant design uh, RC structures. Well, this particular provision of Section 418 is all about spatial detailing provisions. As I have said, we can always design our structures according to Section 401 to 417, Section 419 to 426. But if you want your structures to be really seismic resistant, we should come up with spatial detailing provisions and these are all defined in Section 418. The code that we are using, we have these specific provisions, uh, specific provision on design of beams, which is Section 409. But definitely, for for all the uh, for all the things, you know, for all the procedures that we are designing, if you want to design the beam. You can always refer to Section 409 uh, of NACP 2015. But basically, when you design, you, know, you may not be thinking yet you know, or considering yet the detailing uh, requirements. Why we really have to design our structures you know, to be seismic resistant? Let's try to, deter, uh, to, to figure out what really happens in beams? When do we consider that our beams would be, say, I would say, in a near failure? Is it because that there are present of cracks that we that we see in the, in RC beams? What are the different types of cracks in RC beams? Now we have say flexural and flexural uh, flexural shear cracks, or you can have something like web shear cracks. Sometimes we do also see uh, torsion cracks or band cracks or shrink cage, uh, shrink cage cracks. But if you try to know exactly the behavior of a beam and we want to know whether the beam is already failing, then we have to focus in these two main uh, types of failures. These are the flexural uh, failure and the shear failure. So it is not enough maybe that when we design our beam according to section 409, and then we, 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 we use all the formulas that we have learned no, during our college days. So maybe you could say that, oh, uh, your beam would be uh, okay, no, would be the, uh, strong enough to resist whatever load. But the problem is what if you have uh, a severe ground shaking, what will happen? Did we design this beam to be really uh, uh, absorb the, that uh, force no, generated by the ground motion? 
So maybe that would be a big question mark in your design. So that is why Section 418 no, gives us these uh, provisions so that we can uh, fine tune our design and make sure that our design would be able to behave in a way it will be ductile so that it can absorb more energy, more forces, so that we will be able to prevent or avoid these failures. So, in other words, we would have to come up with a moment resisting frame. But when we design our structures in zone four, then we must ensure that, that the moment resisting frame would be designed as a spatial moment resisting frame. Otherwise, if it is not assigned to seismic zone four, say for example in the Philippines at uh, say zone uh, seismic zone two, then perhaps we could design our structures simply for ordinary moment frame or intermediate moment resisting space frame. Now, what is the principles for analysis and design of SMRF? Well, looking at this table 208, that's 11A, uh, which is all about the structural system uh, for concrete, the response modification factor we use uh, when we compute our design base shear, we use the R factor of eight. In NACP 2015, as you can see in the table, uh, it is uh, indicated there as 8.5. <clears throat> then we do the proper proportioning and uh, we satisfy some detailed requirements to ensure that inelastic response no, would be ductile. There are three main objectives no, why we have to do it as SMRF. First, we want to achieve that a strong column weak beam design that spreads in elastic response over you know, a number of stories would be satisfied. But of course, uh, I would be discussing in detail this strong column weak beam because uh, this is uh, uh, mainly discussed in uh, columns. We want to avoid more brittle failure modes such as shear and axial at the connection. And we want to provide details that would enable your structure or your member to be ductile and having that uh, response, flexural response in yielding regions. We have seen a lot of uh, failures in the recent earthquakes. And uh, I would say that these are the things that we, I would, I would say that these are the things no, that may have been overlooked in, in the design of these structures. <clears throat> The structural members uh, in general are actually uh, proportioned, designed, and detailed to be earthquake resistant. And of course, when we talk about structural members, we are referring to the beams, the columns, and the beam column joints in reinforced concrete structure. As a standard practice, we proportion these members, you know, starting with conceptualization based on architectural, uh, architectural requirements to satisfy statics, aspects of your building. <clears throat> However, the designers are trained to meet the code. I would say the code is our shield. We simply design our structures to satisfy the minimum code requirements. And if you talk about reinforced concrete, we satisfy the requirements for the strength and serviceability provisions of section 401 through 417 and section 419 to 425 of NECP 2015. The key considerations of the design of these members in spatial moment frame is that these members should exhibit ductile behavior when subjected to severe earthquake ground motions. And they should have absorptive capacity to sustain large deformations. To be able to do that, section 418 will give us the proper or rather the, uh, uh, the design and the detailing uh, requirements to enhance tactility uh, requirements. <clears throat> when we design, of course, we have a lot of computing tools. We have the software 
the structural engineering uh, software commercially available that we can always aid us, aid each and every structural engineer. We have ETABs, we have SAP 2000. Of course, when we do the analysis, the modeling, we make use of this software. Sometimes you also use this software when we design your, your elements. We have the Midas Gen or the Midas Design Plus. Or we have the Stad Pro. Now they have this uh, Stad uh, Connect Edition, where you can now design arms reinforced concrete uh, uh, structures. And we have this prototype structure. But, you know, all of these things are tools to aid us to, to make our life easy, you know, especially in compute, uh, computations. But at the end of the day, we need to know how these uh, softwares were developed and then we apply it when we design our structures, we make sure that the result that we are getting from all, all of these analysis and software, you know, we should be able to understand. We have to discern the results so that in this case, we have to learn how the software really design your components. This lecture series or this, this particular lecture will uh, somehow give you an idea on, we need to go back to what we have learned during our college days. We have to go back to basics. We have to understand the basics because at the end of the day, whatever results that this software will give us, we have to validate them. And that is, I think, structural engineering. If we all rely, if, it's, if an engineer will simply rely on the software and whatever resource that will be given to the engineer, then, then you simply uh, accept it, then you are not an engineer. The entire Philippine archipelago is predominantly in high seismic risk. Wherein the entire Philippines is in zone four, except Palawan, Tawi-Tawi, and Zulu. So as you can see in this uh, uh, slide here, you see the seismicity of the Philippines, and you have these uh, recorded earthquake events for the past 400 years, uh, showing uh, the epicenters, uh, 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 epicenters uh, that have uh, hit our country you know, for the past 400 years. Uh, using this uh, seismicity uh, uh, indicator, then that is the basis of coming up with our seismic uh, map of the Philippines as generated by uh, FIVOX. <clears throat> and as we all know that the FIVOX is uh, continuously monitoring all the uh, seismic actions uh, for the entire Philippines. So the special provisions for seismic design and detailing are intended to provide buildings with the required toughness and ductility. So we have section 418. The other provisions are intended to provide them that we can simply satisfy the strength, durability, integrity, and serviceability you know, as, uh, as uh, provided from sections 401 to 417 and 419 to 425. 418 in, uh, in particular provides the designers to perform and meet special proportioning and the daily requirements that may lead to a building structure capable of resisting strong earthquake ground motion without significant loss of stiffness or strength. And in so doing, the structure expected to satisfy a performance level of life safety, at the very least. <clears throat> These are some of the excerpts of that section 418. So I will be walking you through section 418 so that you will somehow you will be able to fully understand what is this section 418 all about you know as as a structural engineer or as structural engineers our our bible is the code so we must uh i would say fully uh understand you know, what uh, the contents of this code so that uh, you know how to interpret them and be able to understand them, uh, to understand them correctly. So we have 418, that one, the scope, and this is all about uh, structural system designated as part of the seismic resisting or seismic force resisting system. And also 
members not desired, designated as part of the seismic force resistance system, but required to support other loads while undergoing deformations associated with earthquake effects. But uh, my, uh, my, my, my presentation for today is, uh, would be focusing on uh, special moment resistant frame. So I have presented to you the different structural system and that was also discussed here. In most cases, from low to medium rise buildings in this country, we design our RC structures to be of moment frames. Well, uh, I, I, I would say no, uh, that most engineers, no, it's very seldom that the engineers designing medium rise uh, would be uh, resorting to the use of dual system. Not unless, of course, the medium rise would reach, as I say, about 15 story high. But in general, we adapt moment frames, no? In particular, uh, we adapt this uh, and selected uh, as the seismic force resistance system when architectural, architectural space planning flexibility is required. <clears throat> as a general rule, this SMRF is selected to buildings assigned to seismic design categories, the ENF, no? So that is, uh, as you can see from the table here, uh, D, E, and F are assigned to uh, a high seismic zone region wherein we use the moment frame type as spatial. <clears throat> so buildings designed based on NACP, uh, they have just recommended our values. No? And as we, as we all know that when we say uh, using SMRF, then we simply look at the table 208-11A uh, for RC uh, frames, uh, for RC concrete rather, no? uh, you use the value of R and, and other uh, uh, parameters, which are likely to be subjected to, you know, repetitive or cyclic uh, lateral displacement, well beyond the elastic range of, uh, of the strength of the reinforcement. <clears throat> Further, for section 418, those, uh, all those uh, different uh, moment frames were discussed. And uh, basically, you, would be, you will be guided when to use ordinary moment frame, and when to use intermediate moment frame, and when do you really use spatial moment frame. <clears throat> now, in this particular code, there are also some provisions wherein the minimum compressive strength of concrete is defined. Now, table 419.2.1.1 gives us the limits you know, for the compressive strength of concrete to be used. So as you can see, for spatial moment frame, the minimum strength of concrete should be 21 megapascal. And the maximum, uh, as uh, stated here, is 35 megapascal. <clears throat> Okay, these are some other uh, provisions of, the, of that section, uh, or rather some other sections of section 418. And also there is this mention about uh, the steel or the reinforcement that we are going to use in our RC structure. So the deformer shall conform to A, B, C, D, and E, and F, wherein you have here the, the different standards for the type of the reinforcement that you are supposed to use in your RC structure. Well, of course, when you talk about uh, deformed bars, uh, very common that we use in the Philippines are that of A and B, wherein you have ASTM A615M uh, and ASTM A706M. And these deformed bars, no? especially when used as longitudinal reinforcement, resisting earthquake-induced moment, axial, or, or both, in special moment frame, then we have to use this ASTM A706M, grade 420, and ASTM A615, grade 280 reinforcement, if two and uh, one and two are satisfied, and ASTM 615M, grade 420 reinforcement, if one and three are satisfied. So I think the code is very clear, 
on the on the uh, on the type of the uh, steel reinforcement uh, for longitudinal uh, reinforcement that we have to use. And on the right side of the table of the slide, you see the different uh, uh, standard reinforcing bars used in the in the Philippines. No? Looking at the PNS uh, 49 column. Let's let's now focus on beams of special moment frames. <clears throat> 409 is actually uh, the starting uh, section that talk of, that uh, pro, that uh, gives us your uh, uh, design provisions of uh, structural beams. Basically, uh, we have to design our our beams to resist gravity and lateral loads. And any and any combination thereof, and we transfer these loads to the girders, then to the columns or walls. They can be non-pre-stress or pre-stress or cast in place, pre-cast and or composite. But of course, uh, in our discussion, we'll be focusing on non-pre-stress or reinforced concrete beams under uh, design under section 409. Only consider strength and serviceability, and of course, as we all know. Beams are those horizontal are considered to be horizontal members. Either you have rectangular or T-shaped cross sections. If in case you have a T-shaped sections, then we look at other. Uh, we have to consider the, that uh, that uh, principle of T-beam. But basically, we have we refer to the other uh, section of the code. <clears throat> but when we talk about beams of spatial moment frames. Then we refer to section 418.6 of the NDCP 2015, because it's very clear here that section 418.6 of the NDCP 2015 provides for the design and detailing requirements for beams of spatial moment resisting frame or spatial moment frames resisting lateral loads induced by earthquake ground motions. We don't simply proportion them primarily uh, for uh, to resist shear and flexion, but you know that these beams could be framed to, into columns of spatial moment frame, and therefore we need to satisfy other requirements of the of section 418. <clears throat> Let's look at the dimensional limits. The clear span. No, denoted as L sub N, shall be at least four times the effective depth of the beam. The width of the beam shall not, or shall be at least 0.3 times the gross depth of the beam, or the width of the beam shall be at least 200. That the projection of the beam width beyond the width of the supporting columns on each side shall not exceed the smaller of C2 and 75% of C1, where C1 and C2 refers to the dimension of the columns. <clears throat> so this is uh, the illustration for, for that uh, item number, uh, item letter D. <clears throat> that the longitudinal reinforcement, no? The shall have at least two continuous bars. And I'm pretty sure that you are all aware of that. Both at the top, for top, as well as the bottom reinforcement, the amount of reinforcements, reinforcement shall be at least. No? Of course, section 409 is all about strength and the reinforcement ratio shall not exceed 0 0.025. <clears throat> so you have this, Okay, you have this uh, this particular, uh, or, or rather in this box, well, with, uh, which, uh, which is uh, pertaining to this uh, specific provision of 418631. <clears throat> that the positive moment strength at joint phase shall be at least one half. Here, the positive moment here, which is this one, no? shall be at least one half the negative moment 
provided at the face of the joint. So uh, those are uh, indicated in the box. Both the negative and the positive moment strength at any section shall be at least one fourth the moment strength provided at face of either joint. So meaning, of course, this is these are the bottom bars. And the, mo the, the requirement here, the longitudinal reinforcement here, should be at least one fourth the maximum moment strength here, here, and there. Okay? <clears throat> or rather, the maximum moment at the at the at the face of either joint. <clears throat> okay. So to show, to give you an idea on uh, what, what's the meaning of this uh, particular provision, say you have a beam, this uh, beam of spatial moment frame, of course, frame into columns. And let us say that the top reinforcement at this end is nine of 25 diameter bars. At the right end, you have eight of diameter bars. And of course, at the mid span, the top would be about say two diameter uh, 25 bars. Whereas the bottom reinforcement at the left end is four diameter 25 bars. And at the right end is also four diameter 25 bars. And the mid span requires six diameter, di uh, six diameter uh, 25 bars. Checking the provision that I have uh, just mentioned that at the left, at the, 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 the the bottom bar should be at least one half that of the required reinforcement at the top. So if we divide nine by two, it is not four, but 4.5. But basically we have to make it five instead of four. So meaning four should not be the required reinforcement there. That's why you have an X there. Whereas at mid span, you have two at the top but if you try to look at nine and eight here, and then nine is the maximum, and if we divide that by four, it is nine over four is not two, but rather two and a half. So meaning it should not be two, but rather we have to make it uh, more. So maybe about three. <clears throat> so that would be the case. Then you will have nine, then five here, three at the top here at mid span, six at the bottom, eight, and then four. But obviously for this case, no problem because uh, half of four, uh, eight is four. <clears throat> now, for the lab splices of the formed longitudinal bar shall be permitted you know, for regions for uh, uh, re uh, reinforcement provided over the lab length. The spacing of the transverse reinforcement Enclosing that lap splice bar shall not exceed the smaller of D over 4 or 100 millimeter. So, if in case you will have a, a lap splice here for the longitudinal reinforcement, the required spacing of the transverse reinforcement should be the minimum of D over 4 or 100 millimeters. Lap splices shall not be used in locations A through C. Obviously, not within the joints or not within a distance of twice the beam depth from the face of the joint, say from here up to here, or within a distance of twice the beam depth from critical sections where flexural yielding is likely to occur as a result of lateral displacement beyond the elastic range of behavior. So for item C, I'm sorry. So this is the within the distance of twice the beam depth from the face of the joint. <clears throat> okay, so, okay. Of course, in your, uh, in your frame, maybe when you try to uh, display your uh, moment diagram, so more or less, you are looking at this region for so when you talk about within the joints, and you are looking at this uh, 
within a distance or twice the beam depth at these regions. So of case, uh, of course, considering the effect of the earthquake ground motion, wherein uh, the earthquake is uh, in this direction or the earthquake in the other directions. <clears throat> now, for the transverse reinforcement as prescribed in section 418.6.4, Hoops shall be provided in the following regions of the beam. Over a length equal to twice the beam depth, measured from the face of the supporting column toward the mid-span. So this is what we call as the 2H region. Or over the length equal to twice the beam depth on both sides of a section where flexural yielding is likely to occur as a result of lateral displacement beyond the elastic range of behavior. <clears throat> Where hoops are required, primarily, or rather prima primary longitudinal reinforcing bars closest to the tension and compression phases shall have lateral support in accordance with section 425, that seven, that two, that three, and that four. So, this is an excerpt of that uh, 725, or rather 425, 723, and 724. So trying to look at this uh, diagram here for the, uh, for the hoop or uh, transverse enforcement of the, of the longitudinal reinforcement in beams, it is not enough that you simply have one uh, closed hoop no? that will enclose this longitudinal uh, reinforcement. Rather that you will have, uh, that you provide say this kind of uh, additional hope wherein uh, you are only providing lateral so support of this longitudinal uh, reinforcement greater than 150 millimeter, but rather you will have to make this additional hope no, wherein the, this distance here should be less than 150 millimeter as prescribed in 425.724. So hoops and beams shall be permitted to be made up of two pieces of reinforcement. Either you can have a stirrup having seismic hooks at both ends and closed by a cross tie. So something like this, no? Say for example, you have like, like this one or this one or something like you have this one, no? one closed hook and then you have a U no? well, using detail C. Or in case you have something like uh, a U or something like this, no? wherein you don't have uh, everything as U, then you must have detail B to be provided here. <clears throat> so this portion need is referred to this particular provision or uh, statement here of section 418, that's 643. The first hoop shall be located not more than 50 millimeter from the face of a supporting column. So this is the first hoop and that distance should be, uh, at, uh, should not be more than 50 m, uh, 50 mil. And the spacing of the hoop shall not exceed the smallest of D over four, six times the, uh, the, the, the smallest of the primary flexural reinforcement, if in case you are uh, using uh, banded bars, or if you are simply using a single bar, then obviously six times the bar diameter and 150 millimeter. And for non pre stress or class C pre stress beam with age exceeding 900, you, you are required to provide longitudinal skin reinforcement. So that skin reinforcement might be running in this uh, direction here, wherein uh, sometimes you call this as web reinforcement. Where hoops are required, they shall be designed to resist shear according to 4186.5. So, well, so this is all about this uh, particular provision of this uh, section. 
in beams having a factored axial compressive force, if in case, uh, although uh, sometimes we, uh, we, we design our beams, no? we analyze and design our beams as uh, uh, for, flex, for flexure. But of course, uh, when we try to look at the results of your structural analysis, sometimes we do uh, see some uh, horizontal members or beams or gitters uh, having some, uh, you know, some axial compressive forces. But just the same, you have, the, uh, if in case you have these axial compressive forces, then you look at this uh, section 418647 for you to be able to check on this uh, uh, expression here whether you are exceeding or not exceeding this. Uh, uh, ex uh, expression here, AG multiplied by FM of C over, uh, over 10. <clears throat> if that would be the case, then you have to satisfy this particular provision of section 418647. <clears throat> now, going to the shear strength. Shear strength of beams or special moment frames is uh, analyzed based on the design shear force denoted as V of E, calculated from the consideration of the forces on the portion of the beam between faces of the joints. This shear, design shear force is calculated from the moments of opposite sign corresponding to what we call as the probable flexural or moment strength, denoted as MPR. These act at the joint faces. It is associated with the range of factored axial load PU acting on the member and, the, and that the beam is loaded with the usual gravity, gravity loads along its span. So that is the, the description of this particular uh, provision of section 418.6.5. So let me just show you this, uh, this particular provision here. So let us say you have the gear there here this gear there here and this gear there here, and then this is the uh, one story height. So the clear span is denoted as L of N, the height, the story height, no, the clear column height is L of U. And then if we try to uh, isolate, say this beam here, then you will have a moment here and you will have the moment at the other end. No? And these are the probable moment strength. You have MPR one at the left and MPR two at the other at the other end, and then you have the usual, the factor gravity load, which is computed as 1.2 times that of the dead load plus 1.0 that of the life load plus 0.2 s. But of course, we do not have uh, snow load in the Philippines, so we can simply ignore 0.2 s. Then when uh, when we have this diagram here. Uh, uh, free body diagram of uh, all these forces acting on this beam, then you can simply plot your shear diagram and we compute the design shear force, uh, giving us the maximum value. That, that this end moments MPR shall be based on the reinforcement tensile strength equal to at least 1.25 uh, times, that, times that of Fy. And as we all know, FY is the specified district of the reinforcement. Both end moments should be considered in both directions. So for example, if you isolate this as a free body diagram, then we have this MPR acting counterclockwise and on the other end, MPR2 also acting counterclockwise. Then you do the same, wherein the end moments would be acting clockwise. So this is uh, the other, <clears throat> or rather, this is the uh, the, uh, the formula for computing the probable moment uh, MPR. But of course, uh, uh, one thing that you should take note is that, that the V of E should not be less than that no? uh, required by analysis. Of course, that required by analysis is when you do the uh, 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 analysis of the beam, wherein you 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 get the base of the the shear the the, the, the shear force uh, based on analysis, and that is uh, you design it for shear using uh, section four zero nine. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, so uh, of course this only explains the uh, the notations used in those uh, in that uh, formula for computing MPR. So it's almost the same formula that when we uh, when we compute uh, uh, nominal moment strength no? uh, based on analysis. And uh, to go further with section four one eight six five, you have this uh, uh, requirement. Uh, uh, most probably the requirement for the transverse reinforcement because. Uh, Whatever uh, uh, design shear force that you obtain from this uh, uh, analysis, uh, from this calculation here, then you will have to, again, go over your uh, transverse reinforcement and design it accordingly based on the requirement of this design shear strength, uh, rather the design uh, shear force uh, computed from the probable moment strength. <clears throat> okay, so... Let's be, allow me to present to you uh, a sample, no? a problem to, for you to be able to, to have a better understanding of uh, those provisions of the section 418. <clears throat> Let us say you have this frame and then uh, let me just focus say on this particular gear there. And then we, uh, we, we come up, uh, we isolate this and then that is marked as 2G4. And this is about uh, that two G four of the second floor of uh, say of this office building having this uh, second floor framing plan. Well, of course, uh, uh, the, the the building has been analyzed, so there are uh, there are uh, the initial uh, uh, stresses or forces that has been uh, uh, obtained from the structural analysis. The material strength you have F prime of C thirty five megapascal. The use strength of the longitudinal reinforcement is four twenty megapascal. And that of the transverse reinforcement, say 280 megapascal. The beam properties, you have 350 by 600. Let us say uh, we use diameter, the diameter, uh, diameter 25, say in two layers. And then uh, we compute for the effective depth, uh, giving us 510.5 millimeters. And the effective length of the, or rather the clear uh, span of the gear, there is uh, 5.25. The gravity loads, you no? Know, uh, the total uh, dead load is uh, 22.124, whereas the life load is 9.06. No? Uh, uh, just uh, go over this uh, dead load and life load uh, as, uh, uh, based on the analysis uh, from, from the use in the analysis of the building. <clears throat> so computing for the factored load double is a few for us to be able to uh, compute the probable moment uh, strength. So W of U is equal to 1.2 times that of the dead load uh, times 1.0 that of the life load. So we are getting say 35.608. Now just for simplicity of the uh, computations, we use 30, say 36 megapascal. Now, of course, the, the, the beam should have been, should, should have been uh, analyzed already and extracted uh, results from the analysis uh, the, shear, the, shear, the, the moment at the left is 579.3 kilonewtons, at the right is 564.1, and at midspan, 566.6. No? The design moment as an envelope. Uh, the same thing for the design shear force. The shear at the left is 345.49, at the right is 339.44, and the midspan is 240. <clears throat> Then, of course, uh, going back to what you have learned in, in your uh, reinforced concrete design, so computing, no, as if you have a single reinforced section, the factored moment strength is computed using this formula. Wherein the strength reduction factor there, no, for phi is uh, for. Uh, for, uh, for moment is 0.9 and for shear is 0.75. <clears throat> okay. So this is, of course, uh, uh, an excerpt from the pro provision of uh, section 409.5.2 uh, referring to the moment in, uh, in beams. <clears throat> okay, and we, we simply satisfy this, no? Uh, when we design your beam, no? For for the requirement of section 409. And then when we design it, now you have this schedule already. And assuming that you have this enforcement based on the extracted, uh, uh, extracted results. 
So the top reinforcement would give you 7 of diameter 25 in two layers, meaning 5-2. And at the right support, also 7 of diameter 25 in two layers, 5-2. And at mid-span, you have 3 of diameter 25. The bottom reinforcement at the left is 4. Then you have only one layer, 4. And then at the right, there's also 4. And at mid-span, you have 7. Uh, two layers, so you have 5-2 uh, also. <clears throat> then using that formula for uh, getting the ultimate strength uh, design method no? wherein this of you is equal to phi multiplied by the sum of the shear in the concrete and that of the uh, shear to be resisted by the shear reinforcement wherein your V of C the limit of that as, uh, for a one-way shear or beam shear we have this formula here uh, based on section 422 and that of the shear to be resisted by the shear, shear reinforcement would be uh, uh, calculated using this equation here. <clears throat> okay. Then this is the results of your design no? for based on the analysis. So you have uh, two, of, uh, two legs of diameter 12 I'd uh, rather using two legs of diameter 12, you have at the support, say one at 50, 10 at 150, then three at 250. Same thing at the right support, then towards the misman, rest at 250 millimeter spacing of the ties or the stirrups. <clears throat> it is noted that the large slices where a course shall be confined by hoops, spaced at the lesser value of the over four or 100, no, whichever is smaller. So as prescribed in section 418, 6.3.3 of the NSCP 2015. Now, let us apply the provisions of section 418. In this case, let us compute that shear strength due to probable moment strength, MPR. <clears throat> so these are the loadings. No? And from, your, from our analysis, we have seven diameter, uh, seven of the 25 at the left. Whereas at the bottom on the other end is four. So computing this, uh, rather considering this uh, uh, free body diagram, no? considering the uh, moment in the counterclockwise direction, so we have this uh, diagram. You also do the same no? for the moment, uh, for the probable moment in the other direction, wherein in this case, uh, this will be due to the for diameter 25 at the left and also and at the right end you have seven of diameter 25. <clears throat> so computing for the MPR using that formula, wherein uh, in that formula your fee is, is not 0.9 but rather 1.0. So you compute for your stress block A as if uh, you have a singly reinforced section. So you have A173 here and computing for MPR, you are getting 765. And at the right end, so since this is based on seven, and the other uh, on the right end is based on four diameter 25, then your A is 99, then your MPR2 is 475.337. <clears throat> and computing for the design shear force, this of E, and using this formula here, no? then your vis of E for the plus sign will be 330.769 and for the minus sign, you have 141. So this is for the first diagram, wherein seven diameter 25 gear and four diameter 25 gear, then this is your shear diagram. Now, considering the other directions, you do the same. In this case, in the clockwise direction. So since uh, literally you have uh, four of 25 here at the bottom here and seven of diameter 25 here at the right end, so you are getting the same uh, numerical uh, values. You know? uh, well, I, I intentionally uh, did this so that I will not do uh, doing a lot of uh, computations. But anyway, what is important is the procedure. <clears throat> so, we uh, calculate the design shear force based on the probable uh, moment strength. 
So we get the same uh, numerical value for the views of E, except that uh, the direction would be reversed. <clears throat> okay, then based on that, let us compute the, tra the, uh, the transverse reinforcement. No? Uh, as per section 4, uh, 418652, the transverse reinforcement over the lengths identified on section blah, 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 no? designed to resist assuming V sub C is equal to zero when both A and B occur. Now let us check A and B. The earthquake induced shear force V sub E no? should be greater than V sub U over two. Now since V sub U is, uh, is that one from your analysis, which is 345 and you divide it by two, 330 is the computed V of E. Obviously, it is more than V of U over 2. So you satisfy letter A. The letter B, the factored axial compressive force V of U, including earthquake effects, is less than A sub G F rem of C over 20. Now, since uh, there is no uh, uh, mention about the piece of view from the analysis that piece of view is, uh, is that much, now in this ex uh, example, let us take that piece of U is equal to zero from, uh, from analysis. And therefore, we satisfy this condition. Therefore, we assume B sub Z is equal to zero. So in that case, when we compute your V of S using this equation where V of C shall be zero, then we, have, we will have this V of S, no? which will be equal to 441.025 kilonewtons. And based on this V of S here, then you will have to calculate your shear reinforcement based on that design shear force due to probable moment strength. So in that case, say uh, you are getting here, say assuming that you have, uh, you are using diameter 12 uh, for the transverse reinforcement and uh, using this formula here, wherein of course AB rep uh, represents two legs of the, the, the area of one uh, 12 the bar, so you're getting spacing of uh, 73.2. All, let us say we express this in terms of uh, AV over S, then you have this expression here, where in that spacing, you should have at least three legs. <clears throat> so we simply, meaning that we have to provide three legs of diameter 12 hoops at 100 millimeter within the 2H region. And as we all know, in, in, in BIM, that 2H region is the plastic hinge region from the face of the column. <clears throat> so if we try to compare now to the, that one we, uh, we, uh, we have no? based on analysis, you will now have to revise these details to, to satisfy section 418. So instead of using two legs, now you will be using three legs. And in this case, you will have to rearrange in such a way that the spacing will now be one at 50, say 12 at 100, then three at 250. You do the same for the right support and rest at the mid span 250 millimeters. <clears throat> Okay, well, I guess that uh, wraps up my presentation. So before I do that, well, uh, I just talk about beams of special moment frames, but definitely when we talk about the reinforced concrete structures, this is not, this is just, you know, uh, uh, one aspect of your uh, RC, uh, RC design in special moment frame. So we still have to deal with columns, we still have to deal with the beam column joints to ensure that you design your structure you know, to, sat to, be, uh, to satisfy the ductility requirement and the spatial uh, detailing provisions of NECP 2015. So again, thank you for watching and listening. Stay safe, everyone. And God bless us all. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Adam, for that uh, very comprehensive lecture. No, so I have uh, a few questions. Uh, Eric, we still have time for the no for the questions, ba? Yeah. So, uh, 
marami tayo ano, it's just three, it's just four, four fifteen. So marami na may pagutain time to answer your questions. Okay, so I'll be asking Adam a number of questions. Some of these questions okay. I have answered through the chat, pero I would like to ask uh, your your answers on this para the the participants would be able to know uh, what would be your uh, response to this, no? So uh, I have some questions, so I'll I'll be bringing it up to you. Uh, okay. This comes from uh, June Rodriguez. No? After an earthquake, on the assumption that there is no there are no visible flexural or shear cracks or stresses on the structure of a high-rise building, what could be a good basis for non-structural engineers, uh, such as building or property managers, to say that the building is still safe for occupancy? Well, basically, I think uh, the very first uh, step that the building uh, uh, admin should do is uh, to have the building uh, uh, be investigated. I mean, it's not enough that you simply look at the building, look at the members, and then uh, see uh, you didn't see uh, any any cracks or any sign of uh, distress. But definitely, they have to consult us a structural engineer uh, to be able to do the further investigation. And uh, if, if, if ever, they will have to conduct some uh, testing, uh, non-destructive testing, to be able to know whether there are really no problem in the, in the structure. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, another question okay. from uh, Engineer Perpetua Pastor, no? Junior. Uh, which structural engineering software would you recommend? Uh, Staad, ETABS, or any other softwares you're using aside from the two, which you think are user-friendly and uh, would generate safe and economical design? Um, it's hard to mention uh, any particular uh, software because, uh, 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 of course, uh, I, I don't want to be... Uh, uh, to be uh, misquoted as uh, promoting a software, but of course okay in, my, okay in, my office, any, any, yeah. <laughs> in my office we are using MyDAS and we are using ETAPS and, and we are also using STAD. I am a licensed uh, user of uh, STAD, I am a licensed user of MyDAS and we also have license for ETAPS. So yung binagit kong isang prota, wala pa akong license, no? but uh, I was able to explore uh, that software uh, giving us an evaluation copy uh, by the by the distributor of our proto software, and somehow uh, uh, I have a basically I have a, uh, we have personal experience on these uh, four softwares. Now, as to which among them are the best or is the best, um, siguro kaya nalang tumuklas. <laughs> you better find it out because. Uh, uh, it's really hard to mention. Uh, I mean, to which which among them is. Uh, but if I, if we're going to uh, say, try to uh, look at the, you know, what what uh, do most uh, structural engineers are, are uh, using? I would say I think uh, there are, most structural engineers are using uh, ETABS and uh, MIDAS and. Uh, but for for buildings, I tell them that they use STAD, although STAD STAD uh, connect. Has already uh, an advanced uh, feature wherein uh, you can now do a uh, uh, design of uh, RC buildings using STAD, uh, STAD Connect. <clears throat> okay, so another question from Manuel Soniga. No? Uh, NCP 2015 was patterned uh, based on UPC 1997. Uh, what is the difference between NCP 2015 and 2009 IBC AAC 705 for seismic design? Oh, there's a big difference, definitely, because UBC 1997, uh, uh, we are co we compute our, you know, say for the design they share, uh, wherein uh, you are using this uh, static formula for the design they share. Uh, in IB, uh, definite or already the using some uh, spectral uh, maps or uh, seismic hazard maps, wherein uh, you have to use. Uh, uh, other parameters in computing, or other formulas in computing uh, the design vision. Entirely different. So at this point, uh, uh, NACP 2015 is still patterned, uh, for the seismic provisions, no? still uh, patterned, uh, or rather uh, adapt, adapted the uh, UBC 1997. Uh, well, looking forward, 
uh, looking ahead, uh, in NSCP 2015, we are looking at the seismic provisions to be migrating the, the provisions that are similar to that of the seismic, provi seismic provisions of ASCE 7, uh, DAS 10 or DAS 16. Okay, Adam, I'd just like to clarify now. The, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the change, the difference would be on the base shear loads uh, in terms yes. of design. We are, design. we are patterned based on the ACI provisions. So, so regardless of the uh, seismic load calculations, the, the concrete design uh, or the beam design, uh, column design would be up to date. Is that correct? correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So another question um, from Luisito Carlos, uh, what are the considerations of this new normal in the construction industry in terms of sexual procedure and quality policy making? and in the drafting of construction contracts? Uh, well, as, as far as the structural engineering practice is concerned, I don't, I don't think uh, 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 we will be affected by the new normal because the procedure will be basically the same except that how we deal with clients and how we, uh, you know, uh, do our work in, the, in our respective workplaces. I would say that the new normal would be uh, when we adapt to a new code or a new uh, standard that we will be using when we design our structures. But basically, when we uh, uh, say come up with the NACP uh, 8 edition, then definitely we'll be adapting uh, new publications uh, from, from, from the US and uh, from other uh, standards, then that's all, uh, that's all about, that's, that's, that's about it. No? Uh, a new normal in the practice is the new standards that we will be adapting in our code. But as to the as, as to the procedures, it's, it's uh, I mean, in, in physical, no? physical day-to-day uh, 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 -day, uh, activity that we are doing as a structural engineer, definitely we have to uh, uh, observe all the health protocols prescribed uh, 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 regulated by the by the government for us uh, to be able to beat uh, COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, Adam, pardon me, I'll be debating a little. No? So I, since yeah. uh, our chairman is here, uh, I would like to ask uh, Engineer Praxi, our chairman Praxi Bernardo. Uh, there's a question: uh, What edition Paul will be the PRC? What edition of the NCP uh, will be used for the PRC board exam? Ma'am, nakamute po kayo. Uh, Ma'am, nakamute po. Yeah, yeah um, that is a very controversial question. Although <laughs> we try to be um, uh, in line with the latest. So we refer to the NSCP 2015. Okay, thank you, Ma'am. Uh, NSCP 2015. Well, so in, fact, in, in fact, I would like to thank uh, Engineer Adam for... Um, Reminding me of the load factors that uh, yes, the previous exams, the previous exams, we use the old code. So yes, the recent questions will be based on the new code. Uh, thank you, Adam, for that. Yeah, thank welcome, you, Ma'am. Ma 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 yes. Okay. So another question for Adam. Uh, what about the seismic design of existing structures? Where can we find the NSCP section? Okay. Um, in our NACP, there's no specific uh, or particular provision about uh, uh, analysis and this, uh, analysis of existing structures. Um, although, in some uh, projects uh, of the government, or in some projects where in the, they uh, they will require us to uh, to do uh, evaluation and uh, investigation of existing structure, we can always refer to as if that. Uh, uh, to our code, but the NCP 2015, as if that you are analyzing your existing structure as a new building. No, that could be a procedure. Uh, that you, that, uh, that is something that you can uh, uh, that you can do. But uh, uh, in some uh, some uh, some engineers, no, like in our case, uh, uh, if there is uh, well, really depends on the terms of reference that will be uh, given to you. No, when you do the. Uh, evaluation uh, of existing structure, but if you are uh, really practicing, uh, doing some works other than design, uh, you are also referring to other standards like ASCE 41, 
uh, wherein you you do the uh, seismic, no? very specific about it, the seismic uh, evaluation and and uh, retrofitting of uh, existing structure. Uh, it will be all uh, up to you. No, I don't want to because it's not yet. Uh, uh, prescribing the code in the NSCP 2015, but although there is this, uh, you know, this uh, provision about uh, alternative procedure, then the disruption union would have the option to do uh, other procedures, uh, not prescribed in the NSCP, but you can also refer to other standards like AAC 41. Okay, uh, another question uh, from Ray Marty Borjo. Uh, for stirrups and hoops which are built up, uh, meaning not the not a complete hoop uh, because it cannot be bent as a one piece due to the size of the such as such as uh, whalers. Uh, how do you calculate the development length, lap length of the built-up stirrup or hooks? Okay. Uh, actually, to say slide, uh, there is this mention about the hook that you have for the stirrup. Huh? That well, when you develop the seismic hook. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you have to develop it to six times the diameter of the bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, another question from Fredel De Vera. Uh, during cyclic load conditions, the performance of the beam column joint can result to slippage and degradation of stiffness in the joint core. Uh, what does the NCP tell us about this for the anchorage requirement for the beam bars? So discussing about cyclic load conditions and uh, degradation of the member and how does the, the NSCP uh, uh, answers this uh, effect on, uh, and uh, address it through the anchorage? Okay, uh, although I, I, I wasn't able to show it, I think, in my slides, but there is this uh, uh, specific provisions on the development of the anchorage length. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a copy of the NSCP, but... Uh, uh, there is this uh, particular provision about the development of anchorage legs for the longitudinal bar or reinforcement in, in beams. Yes, it's uh, it's LDH, the, the development length of the hook. Yes, LDH. Inside, yeah. uh, in the, inside the column. Yeah, okay. So, another question from Eric Salazar. Now, why does the NSCP does not have a commentary like the ACI and the IAC? It will be beneficial to the structural engineers practicing in the Philippines to know common practices and theoretical background behind the code? We all know for a fact that uh, our uh, section four, or rather chapter four of uh, NECP 2015, the structural concrete is uh, uh, adapted, or rather uh, adapted the ACI uh, 318-14, uh, 318M-14 uh, uh, to be specific. Uh, of course, uh, since we simply uh, uh, copy uh, most of the provisions of the ACI 318-14 and uh, 318-M-14 and you have the 318-R-14 wherein you have the commentary then I would uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's imperative for the designer to refer to the ACI 318-R-14 which most engineers uh, do uh, like in my case I, I always refer to 318-M 318-M and 318R, that's 14. If ever I see some, uh, you know, some uh, some uh, provisions in the NSCP 2015 which are not very clear to, uh, to to us as a designer, so I would I suggest that I advise you to to just uh, simply refer to the commentary uh, in ACI 318R, that's 14. Well, we are. I don't, we, we I are also. Uh... We are, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, just to add. Uh, of course, uh, as much as we would like to, to do some commentary, uh, maybe that's the reason why we are coming up with some uh, uh, RC design manual. So that's uh, as I have uh, flashed a while ago at the start of my presentation, that we are coming, uh, coming up with this manual so that uh, we can more or less uh, help our, our future engineers or those engineers would like to do design so that they, they can be aided by these uh, design manuals. Yes, uh, thank you, Adam. Uh, for clarifying that. Uh, we will be coming up with uh, a number of uh, reference manuals for that. No? So an um, another question from Manuel Suniga. Uh, if seismic design relies on loads that account for inelastic behavior and energy dissipation, how is lateral drift addressed? 
Well, definitely, I think uh, uh, you really have to uh, resort to the use of uh, passive devices. So that is where you have to use the uh, dampers or any any devices that will uh, uh, address uh, those uh, issues. Okay. Um, some more questions. Uh, why is the word detailing sometimes distinguished from seismic design? So there's a difference between seismic design and detailing. Can you clarify uh, why do we need to emphasize that these are two different things in structural engineering? Well, when we say it's design, no? uh, as I have presented a while ago, that is actually seismic design. But when you uh, say detailing, it's more on you know, how you gonna uh, execute the design that you that you that you do so it's more on showing the I would say the, the reinforcement how the reinforcement should be uh, arranged and sh should be sized up and should be uh, the tie should be arranged and should be uh, sized up and so on so I would say uh, uh, this de design and detailing are two different things now when uh, detailing is something that uh, that is visible that, uh, that is given to the field, uh, to, the, to the construction for them to be able to visualize how you're going to implement the design. Okay, so this is uh, beyond uh, our our beam topic, but it is also good to know. Uh, when can we use footing tie beams and what elevation should we put it? Uh, what do you recommend? Footing tie beams. Okay, um, okay. footing tie beams. Um, In most case, uh, in most most buildings, especially if you have uh, the, the the depth of embedment, the footings would be deeper, uh, would be deep, no? something like say, say more than three meters. It is advisable that we put uh, footing footing tie beams, and this footing tie beam should be placed on top of the footing. Now, once you elevate this beam no? to uh, to a level which is not uh, close to the footing, then sometimes we don't call them anymore as tie beam, but rather we call them as a great beam. So these are uh, additional beams wherein you just to break, uh, especially if you if, if the embedment is uh, too deep, then you have to provide additional uh, supports uh, at the ground level so that from the ground level up to the next floor or to the second floor, then you just treat that as another element. So then you will have another portion of the column wherein you will have the space between this ground beam or grade beam and that of the footing tie beam. But basically, as we understand and as we are taught in uh, during our college days, that uh, one basic uh, reason why uh, we put tie beam is for differential settlement or to arrest or to prevent. Uh, differential settlement but there is a uh, there are also other reason you know, why we put uh, uh, tie beam now well of course that will affect how you gonna model your uh, your foot your uh, your base especially at the column at the base uh, in your in your structure analysis that is where the footing tie beam will uh, uh, will make uh, a difference in your analysis but definitely again just to answer the question if you the embedment of the footing is too too deep, then we have to provide this uh, footing tie beam. Uh, it, uh, as an added info, Adam, this footing tie yeah. beams can dissipate the bending moments. Than that is correct. Than the foundation. Yeah, that will. Yeah, you are right. Uh, this footing tie beams can uh, dissipate or reduce the moment that will be transferred to the footing. Hmm. Okay. Um, there's a question from Nyora Puriscal. No? This is regarding the effect of shear envelopes in checking the spacing of syrups. It was mentioned uh, that by an author uh, like McGregor that shear envelopes is happening to the effect of live loads. Does section 418 consider shear envelopes in understanding the spacing of syrups? So, uh, uh, no, it's, 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 uh, uh, it is not uh, stated there in a section 418. Uh, my example is just an illustration wherein I just uh, uh, is for the purpose of presentation, but actually, when you design your your elements based on analysis, uh, you have to do it uh, the usual uh, the, the usual procedure, not uh, using the envelopes. 
Okay. So another question from Neil Ratonel. No, uh, we are uh, are we developing performance based design codes as part of the size structures in the Philippines? Okay. Uh, the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines has this committee on uh, uh, PBD and uh, uh, what you call this? Uh, well, uh, yeah, performance based uh, performance based, uh, based design guidelines. It's not really a code. So we are coming up with these uh, PBD guidelines so that uh, our our practitioners in the in the in our country would be would be guided by these uh, PBD procedures. Uh, uh, of course, it. it uh, it's, it's still uh, it's still on the you know uh, work in progress. Uh, hopefully, uh, would be coming up when uh, NACP uh, eight edition would be published. Uh, this PBD guidelines would also be published uh, in time for the release of NACP uh, eight edition. Okay. Uh, another question from Rolly Amparo. Uh, so, is it possible to use our fixed end moment diagram and three moment diagrams? in designing SMRF at this moment? Oh, pwede naman. Oh, wala naman nagbabawa sa atin yan. Uh, during our, well, I would say, no, during our time, we st still don't have those you know, computing tools. And uh, when we design our buildings, uh, no matter how, how big they are, they were. No? We use the three-moment equation and the uh, moment distribution method. I don't see any problem with that. But of course, uh, uh, because of the technology, because of this, you know, uh, uh, I would say software. sophisticated software that we have, then I, I, I still believe that I still believe that we are not really uh, this software are not really helping us, no? Because they are uh, the more that they making our, our our lives complicated because the, now they are uh, uh, we are using these tools to to solve complex problems, but during uh, early same uh, time of about 80s we design our structures using these uh, methods then they're still there they're still up there well it's all up to you it's only a matter of how you uh, accept no uh, but of course because of the competition the globalization uh, i think you have to advance your practice yeah uh, adam if i may add uh, yeah. the advantage yeah. of using softwares when we are younger we can do it, we can iterate our design. Yeah. Uh, now, yung in, the, in the olden days, when you have manual calculations, it would be very long, tedious, if you okay. iterate your yeah. design. Now we can optimize our design using our fast computers and these softwares. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, there's a question from Dexter Ramagoza. Uh, in the initial stage of designing members, what may be an initial strategy or assumption in improving the ductility of an SMRF structure? Well, basically, I think uh, what is important there is for you to be able to come up with uh, preliminary, preliminary uh, sizing of your uh, elements or your members. Uh, at the start, if you are a new designer, definitely, uh, you may not think what would be the appropriate uh, initial uh, proportion or initial uh, sizes of the members. But I think uh, as you go along, no? Uh, by experience or by uh, applying some rule of, rules of thumb in in your in the practice, then you can come up with this sizing. Uh, it's not easy, you know, that you can uh, right away uh, decide on the sizing of the members and then think about that this mem uh, that these uh, preliminary uh, member sizes would be able to uh, to satisfy right away the, the requirement for seismic uh, design or whatever. But definitely that will have to be justified by your analysis and your computations. So, so I would suggest that, uh, well, since we are coming up with this RCD manual, all of those things are actually presented in that manual. So you just uh, wait for that manual to come out and then uh, that is a very good, uh, easy reference for you. Okay, so a question from Jimmy Saupan. Uh, sir, what learning path or advice you could give for those who want to specialize in structural engineering? What learning path? Uh, what uh, what learning path or direction could you give those who want to specialize in structural engineering? Or what what did you do uh, when you were <laughs> <Okay>. younger? 
you know what? You know what? Uh, when I was uh, uh, when I was uh, working, uh, first first time to work. No, uh, actually, I uh, my first uh, employer uh, was Doctor Angel Lazaro the uh, third. I I uh, he was my first employer. So when I uh, work in that company, hindi kagat agad na sa structure na ko. Siguro you have to do everything all about civil engineering. Uh, highway, transportation, uh, panahon niya, wala pa namang specialization, pero napunta ako sa transportation bago ako napunta sa mga, sa mga water, water, uh, water supply design and then uh, unti-unti, uh, ganun. Eh. Siguro, it's more of a passion eh. and then uh, kung ano yung gusto mong gawin. No? Yung, yung, you think that uh, it's not, it's not uh, look, uh, thinking of the, the reward or the uh, the, the so money is not the motivation, and I think it's more of you. If you really love what you are doing, then you go for it. So maybe in my case, no, when I started doing some structural design, so I find myself that I would be doing this. No, I would I would like to do this. So so that's it uh, until now. No? Uh, that's what I am now. You know, siguro mabibigay ko advice, but still up to you. Uh, one, you should have passion and you should love what you're doing. And then secondary na lang siguro yung uh, reward or yung monetary. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, another question is uh, from Brian Yu. Um, will ASEP update our seismic provision soon? Yes. Uh, in, in NACP 8th uh, edition, the seismic provisions definitely would be a big turnaround. From migrating from, uh, I mean, from uh, UBC 9, 9, 1997, migrating to ASCE 7 10. Okay. Uh, this is related to your topic. Uh, when sexual calculations computations is completed, there are no particular arrangement of RSBs, reinforce, uh, reinforcing bars. Is there any app that we can see the arrangement of RSB or applications? Also, it affects the strength of the structure. So it's talking about, uh, are, is there any way of calculating or, or is there an ap application that we can use to, to check the arrangement of RSBs, rectangular? Uh, you mean reinforcing the reinforcing bars? steel bars? Are yes. Reinforcing steel bars? Yes. Well, uh, well I, I think that's a good thing about uh, you. Uh, that is a good thing. About, I, th I think what the, this is a good thing about uh, using uh, uh, you, you know, this uh, uh, software. Um, it really depends on the software, no? Uh, say, for example, using ETAS, using MIDAS, using uh, PROTA, or using a Style Pro. If uh, if any of this uh, software that you are using would uh, give you how the bars should be arranged, no? Then then that would be a big, uh, 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 you know, a, a big plus factor, especially in, on how you, you're going to do it. But definitely, uh, uh, it uh, it will still be you know uh, all up to the, the structural engineer on how to uh, to do the proper arrangement of these bars. Uh, if 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 I if I'm not mistaken, sometimes after you come up with your detailing and then submit that, and then uh, say for example the, the the drawings that you have submitted would be uh, would be executed. You still uh, you, there are some RFI and some RFA wherein uh, they would be submitting to you some. Uh, uh, cutting list and so on, and uh, you are sh shown all these uh, arrangements. And uh, all these arrangements uh, should somehow be uh, when you design your uh, members. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Um, no. Okay. Uh, can you, Adam? No, no. Wala. No, wala ako. No, wala. Medyo nag-slow down yung aking internet. Okay. okay. Sige. Another question, Adam, uh, related to that. Uh, does the NCP 2021 uh, patterns uh, to the AC, AC7 uh, provisions, uh, which is better, UBC 97 yeah. or AC7? Adam, uh, can I repeat my question? And uh, pakiulit, medyo nag-ano nag, eh. Nag yeah, okay. So, 
Uh, which is better, UBC 97 or ASCE 7? Provisions for seismic uh, loads. Uh, I have not made any comparison, but I guess uh, I think we have to move forward. Uh, uh, we are really uh, looking at, you know, because of our uh, collaboration with FIVOX uh, coming up with the, the seismic hazard maps, uh, there's no way for us to go to the direction wherein we have to adapt ASCE 7 uh, in, uh, as far as seismic provisions is, uh, are concerned. So we really have to migrate no? from, from uh, I cannot say that a UBC 997 is better than ASC or ASC 7 is uh, greater than, uh, better than uh, UBC 1997. It's, it's, it's more of uh, what would be our direction in terms of practice. <clears throat> okay, so there's a question regarding software. Uh, we have a robot structural analysis by Autodesk uh, simulating window analysis and does not conform to nor follow any code procedures. Is this considered or acceptable to NSCP 2015? Uh, robot, uh, do you know anything about robot? Yeah, software? robot, yeah. Um, well, if you are going to ask me and talk about uh, the legal aspect of, 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 uh, of the analysis or the, the, the software that you're using and what are the requirements uh, as far as structural uh, uh, practice is concerned here in the Philippines, uh, all these things should conform or should comply to the NACP 2015 because that is the referral code of the National Building Code, legally. Okay, uh, this is uh, another question on career. Um, I'm planning to uh, I'm planning to shift to a career, so what would you be your advice if I shift to structural engineering? What, what do you mean from, from being a, a civil engineer or, or a specialization? Uh, he's, uh, he's doing another job, uh, not structural engineering. So if he wants to shift to structural engineering. What would you, what would you suggest? So he's shifting to structural engineering? Yes. Uh, I, I think uh, I continue learn, I mean, continue learning because the structural engineering is not really, uh, well, I would say, uh, you, you do not learn everything by overnight and uh, it really takes uh, a practice and a lot of uh, learning about uh, structural engineering. Uh, I've been practicing uh, together with my colleagues here, uh, Rani, uh, more than uh, 20 years or even my case about more than 30 years. And until now, I'm still learning uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things uh, about structural engineering. Uh, maybe what you have learned in, uh, in your college days or uh, during the when you are when you uh, were taking up your civil engineering and then uh, initially you have all these structural design subjects those were not uh, enough no but definitely this these were not enough so you really have to continue learning uh, that's why we are conducting this uh, webinar lecture series so that uh, for the structural engineering uh, specialization we as much as we can uh, give you more uh, uh, topics that you really learn uh, learn about uh, structural engineering. So yes. I would say you really have to uh, attend more uh, any forum or, or uh, seminars about learnings, especially, uh, especially about uh, lectures, no? In, about uh, what is practice all about. Yeah, that, that came from, uh, that question came from Kevin Derillo. No? Okay. Uh, I would also like to suggest that he enters a structural engineering design firm so he can yeah, and start doing his uh, practice uh, uh, on structural engineering design. Um, question, uh, it's on foundation design. Sir, is it okay to rest your footing uh, coming from Ark uh, Kabugsa? Is it okay to rest your footing for residential building on a backfill? Well, as much as possible, uh, although I'm not a geotechnical engineer, but uh, uh, if you will note that in most of our uh, structural uh, notes or uh, construction, uh, general construction notes, we do not allow uh, footings to be resting on fill. No? Uh, even if uh, no matter how small it is, no? whether it is residential or not. Uh, but uh, I think uh, that could be best answered by a geotechnical engineer as to the, uh, you know, 
if you can really do that. But in our case, we don't uh, we don't allow it. Yeah. Okay. Another question yes. from Michael by law. Some improvement. Huh? <clears throat> yes. Uh, uh, this is uh, off topic, uh, but uh, maybe you have some uh, pointers on it. Uh, if you are asked to place an earthquake engineering recording instrument, are you going to place it on a slab or column or beam for uh, sexual health monitoring? Come again, come again. Yeah. If you are asked to place an ERI, earthquake recording instrument, are you going to place it on a slab or column or beam for the sexual health monitoring of existing structures? Ah, um, well, if you're going to uh, uh, to check on the configuration of your building, uh, I think uh, most of these e uh, ERI are are placed on the on the slab rather than on on uh, on members. Well, it really depends, no. But in most in most cases, it should be on the on the slab. Am I right, uh, Rani? Uh, you were the one talking about this uh, ERI. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah. Uh, uh, of course, uh, what we're talking about when we talk about slabs, meaning it's the it's on the floor, no? Uh, so it's it's placed on the slab, but it can be above a beam. So, but uh, basically, we're thinking of the uh, the floor acting as a rigid diaphragm. So it is, it, but uh, I think the more important uh, aspect in the installation, uh, it's that it should be located near the center of uh, uh, stiffness or the moment of inertia of the building. Okay. okay, so okay. another question. Uh, sir, have you done a study with a comparison of results from manual calculation and using structural analysis softwares? Have you made any uh, comparison? Yes, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that, uh, that is why in my presentation, it is very important to know to understand the basics and uh, you, can, you can still do the manual cal calculation so that you can do validation. And uh, we have done that, and somehow, especially in the computation for the, the uh, computation of the design base sheet, uh, we are doing validation. And then, uh, uh, when we design our elements, we are also doing validation. Okay. For you to uh, have a better in your design. Okay. Um, another question. Uh, it is not related to the topic, but it's regarding rapid visual inspection. So I think we can we can answer this, Adam. Uh, another question. Another question. In doing rapid visual inspection, is there any part of the form, either pre-earthquake or post-earthquake, that considers any content of section 418? Uh, is there checking during rapid inspection if the structure complies with section 418 recommends? Uh, in the rapid visual, I think the, the form that we are using, the tool, no, uh, uh, in doing the rapid visual inspection is the FEMA 154. Uh, basing on the old tool, uh, there's no, uh, uh, I think, any portion there that uh, that would be able, for you to be able to check the sex, whether section 418 has been... Uh, Complied with, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's mentioned there. No, it's not. So there's, there's, I think there's none. There's none. Yeah. There's none. Okay. Uh, question. Uh, there's a question from Mario uh, Gulapa. That, by the way, the question. Uh, that previous question was from Nyoro Forescal. Uh, yeah. Another question yeah. from Mario Gulapa. Uh, due to the pandemic, our scheduled pouring of concrete were suspended. May I know? the complications, particularly on the rebars, for they are uh, in, uh, they are underwater uh, about 60 centimeters in depth. Uh, the, the rebars are there uh, for almost three months. What do you have any recommendations? Yeah. Well, as long as the, this, these rebars are not oxidized, then I think they're still in good uh, condition. Um, so, well, definitely, although I'm not really into that type of uh, it's more on the construction of methodology. Um, what I can say is, uh, as long as these uh, rebars are not oxidized, then I, I think they're still good. You can still uh, do something about it, and then you can you can still use them. But as to the methodology on how you're gonna again uh, protect them, no, uh, to to resume your work, then it, uh, it will be <laughs> it will be up to the construction, uh, you know. Uh, people to do to, to work on that. Yeah, 
uh, if I may add, no, I'm doing construction uh, inspection supervision uh, for sexual works. Uh, if the rebars are corroded, you can still use it. Uh, you remove the rebars. What is what is important is that you check that the diameter of the reinforcing bar is not degraded. Uh, so if it if the diameter uh, is within the tolerable limits, then you can still use the, the reinforcing bars. Um, okay. Uh, there's another question from Eric uh, Salazar. Uh, Regarding planted columns, do you use it in your practice? If so, how do you factor in the the spike in shear that the beam with structural detailing? Uh, uh, that is not part of my lecture. And anyway, uh, I think you have to wait for the column uh, of uh, moment frames because uh, there is uh, there are some cases wherein you have planted columns, and there are also uh, required detailing requirements for for planted columns. And definitely, uh, there would be a separate uh, treatment, uh, especially when you uh, when you have uh, planted columns, because it is a form of irregularity in your uh, frame. So that's why, uh, if you recall, if you have this, uh, uh, when we uh, discuss uh, when we when we design uh, planted columns, and then uh, detail uh, also the, that uh, that uh, member that will be supporting the planted columns, you are uh, 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 using some uh, overstrength factor. Uh, to be able to uh, to be included in your analysis. Okay. Um, last uh, last two questions. Uh, I observed that the latest NCP, uh, the constants of the load factors are becoming lesser. So this is from Giovanni Armantillo. Uh, Armantillo. Hence, the old NCP has conservative design approach, since the load factors are larger. For example. The old one used 1.4 dead live load plus 1.7 live load. Ah, uh, 1.4 dead load plus 1.7 live for dead and live load. So, what can you say about whether uh, the old design is conservative or not? Because uh, of the, I think, I, I think there is a balance. You know, uh, you you have that load factor 1.4 dead load, 1.7 live load, and then you have the strength reduction factor when you design the components. Then you apply this. Uh, uh, whatever method, no. I think there's a balance. So, so in the in the in the uh, recent uh, code that we are using right now, say for example for uh, ACI 318M adapted in uh, any section uh, chapter four of NS, uh, NSCP 2015, uh, some of the reduction factors were also adjusted. Now uh, these uh, load, uh, load factors that we use for dead and live are also adjusted. So I think that that could be the reason why. The, there are some uh, you have these changes it's not uh, it's not really simply changing 1.4 to 1.2 and then uh, you did uh, nothing uh, to that to the rest of the analysis so there is a balance on that <clears throat> okay um so uh last question um uh, is it necessary to take a master degree in structural engineering to master the design of low-rise buildings uh, okay um you are asking about is it necessary for just to yeah, design to have, to have a master's master degree to design a low rise well, it, it will only be a factor no but definitely i always advise uh, even um, my students my even my uh, my engineers in the office that they pursue uh, uh, graduate studies but uh, it's not uh, it, it is not necessary because as long as you are working for a construction engineering uh, firm and then you are uh, have good training, you can just design any type of structures in the in the future. Okay, Adam, at um, uh, this time, can yeah. we have some um, uh, last words from you? Okay, so again, uh, thank you guys uh, for, uh, thank you to the PIC National, uh, thank you Eric, uh, the uh, PIC ISG Chair, for inviting me to be one of your resource uh, persons for this uh, pilot uh, uh, web, uh, webinar lecture series of PICA National, and uh, I really appreciate this uh, a lot. And at least uh, my passion, no? not only in practice, but also my, you know, sharing my knowledge to the uh, to the engineers uh, somehow uh, is uh, is uh, very uh, very uh, prevalent here. So thank you guys, and uh, keep safe, everyone. Yes. Uh, also, uh, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for participating in this. Uh, in this uh, webinar, uh, we hope that we have provided you 
in the structural engineering specialty group uh, uh, a comprehensive knowledge on uh, beam design. Thank you. Eric. Uh, can I say something first? Yes. Okay, um, regarding the last question, uh, that is the thrust now of the Professional Regulation Commission into specialization, in which one of the tracks is through the professional track. So you do not need to have the master's degree, but you have to go into the professional track, in which I believe this specialty group is the first uh, step. Yeah. Right, Eric? Kaya nga, sabi ko noong, was it uh, Wednesday? With, with or without CPD, you civil engineers should take advantage of these seminars that uh, PICE Inc. is um, seminars uh, that being offered to you uh, because you really have abundance of information uh, from uh, um, these lectures. I would like to say that I enjoyed uh, hearing through all the lectures since day one. I've been I'm here um, boom, since day one from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. except last Wednesday, but in the morning. And uh, regarding the question on how to become a good structural engineer, well, I have been practicing for 40 some years and I still <laughs> listening to Adam. Now we are on. <laughs> my, she's my professor, mom is my professor in design. Now I'm learning from him. Uh, believe me, I have been asking him questions regarding the wind provisions in the new code. So, um, you civil engineers, you really should take advantage of this. And thank you so much, uh, PICE. Also, I would like to thank you for the generous uh, donation you gave to the corporate social responsibility of PRC. Mm -hmm. And also to ASEP, uh, who also donated. And also to yeah. PIC Qatar, who we also received donation. Uh, sabi ko nga, ayaw kong patatalbugan tayo ng ibang professions. <laughs> So um, we were able to provide PPEs, um, uh, surgical masks, and testing kits to those among hospitals that um, the government uh, uh, seem to be um, uh, um, not giving enough. So thank you so much. And again, I will look forward to more of these uh, lectures, President Bo. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you po again. Thank you, ma'am. Very uh, good ano po, advice from Ma'am Proxy. So thank you po at na andito po siya since day one hanggang ngayon. So uh, going back to the presentation lang po, uh, yung ibang questions po, you can email it also to zoomwebinar.pice at gmail.com and then uh, the speaker will forward it to the speaker para ma-address niya rin po yun. Uh, again, uh, ako na po magti-thank you po sa mga members natin at attendees na dito. Very, very good po yung mga feedback nyo. Uh, we have about 350 participants po ulit dito sa webinar. And sa live po, I think more more than more than that ang... More than that po yung nanonood sa atin sa FB Live. Uh... Thank you also again to our speaker, partner, Engineer Adam Abinales. Good partner. Thank you rin kay, at sa ating moderator, Engineer Rani Eason. Maganda yung mga questions. Yung mga participants natin, hindi na hindi nahihiya ata pag sa webinar. Eh. Marami mga tinapos. Oo nga eh. Mga <laughs> 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 counting questions. Ating sinasagot niya yung mga, <laughs> mga off-topic questions yun po. But... Uh, Okay po, kasi very, very interactive po yung webinar natin, kahit di tayo face-to-face. -face. Mas, mas ano yung mga questions nyo, mas very informative, tsaka yun nga ho, mas marami mo tayo nagiging questions pag dito sa webinar. Okay, so first and foremost, oh by the way, sorry po. Also, ASEP din po, I think, are, are organizing some webinars. I think somebody was asking yung ASEP din po. I think ASEP is also coming up with uh, webinars. ASEP, uh, if I may advertise, no, uh, ASEP will be coming with the RCD 101 uh, uh, lecture series. Uh, we've been doing that uh, all over the Philippines, but we, we, we are discussing now on coming up with a lecture on, on this uh, RCD 101. Another thing is um, we will be uh, accrediting uh, uh, sexual inspection evaluators. Uh, we, will, we are preparing now uh, a series of uh, lectures also 
uh, for for that for earthquake inspection. So uh, please watch out for announcements so we can uh, inform uh, our members in PICE when will this uh, seminars in ASEP will happen. Thank you, Ran. So yung nga, abangan nyo rin po yung sa ASEP na mga webinar series. So first and foremost, in behalf of the ISU Interspecialty Group Committee of PICE, we would like to thank Everyone, especially po yung lahat po no speakers for the past six days, all the moderators po for the past six days, uh, board of directors po, especially those who are attending also mga present din po sila during the past uh, six days po no webinar. Press Bong, thank you po. No Ma'am Praxi, thank you po rin. Nandi, always present. <laughs> Secretariat po, pasalamatan din po natin Secretariat. Very hardworking po sila ngayon ever since nag-start po tayo even before the prep, even during the preparation sila po working from home skeletal napapauti po sila just organizing this uh, webinar lecture series natin. Also before I forget I'd like to also acknowledge uh, the corporate sponsor of PIC. Nakalimutan pa sila i-greet nung past few days but I'd like to acknowledge our corporate sponsor Davis Paints. Yan po. Davis Paints po, uh, they are our corporate sponsor since medyo na, na put on hold po yung mga RTCs natin at saka mga conventions. So we'd like to acknowledge our corporate sponsor, Davis Paints, corporate sponsor po ng PICE. Okay? Now, open uh, suggestions po for the webinars. We are very much open for suggestions po for future topics po ng webinar series natin. Uh, I got, I, I've read a few once just today, like uh, right shop for how to apply for specialization, uh, structural design for seismic, seismic detailing pa po pala ng bridges. So we'll consider all those and we'll try to again organize another webinar considering all your suggestions. So open po kami, so just send your suggestions and we'll try to look for the right speakers and give you another webinar series for those topics. Okay, uh, again, uh, day one, day three, and day four links for the evaluation form and materials are already out. Please wait po for day two, day five, and day six. Do expect po within this week until next week po. So just uh, uh, fill up the evaluation form, download the materials, and then the certificate will follow na lang po to follow po yung certificate for the six days po. Again, only participants who attended shall be given the certificate. CPD accreditation po for this webinar, we're working on it. So we did we really need also the evaluation forms because that would form part of the accreditation po for this webinar. For announcements po, uh, for future announcements, especially for future webinars at saka po yung mga certificates and links po, just visit the PICE webpage. It's pice.org.ph and the FB page, again, it's Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, Inc. So, ipuntahan nyo lang po yan for announcements. Uh, what else po? Ayun lang po. So just wait for the announcements. Always stay self and heal healthy during this uh, time of pandemic. Uh, Ma'am Proxy, any po final words po? Ma'am Proxy? Okay na po? Uh, congratulations uh, for uh, coordinating this uh, very informative webinar lecture series. Thank you po, Ma'am. Thank you po. So for the closing, uh, President Bong. Okay, yes, sir, Rick. So uh, again, overload of technical learnings today and uh, a very comprehensive lecture. So my profound gratitude to our very knowledgeable speaker, uh, si, uh, Engineer Abinales and our moderator, Engineer Ison. Yeah, and also, of course, to all our speakers no? and panelists and moderators from the past days of this webinar. Uh, our dynamic chair of the PRB of Civil Engineering, Ma'am Proxy, thank you very much for uh, your support and presence during the whole webinar lecture series. Ma'am, thank you very much. And uh, our, uh, of course, our energetic members of the PIC National Board of Directors. Actually, they're on the right side of my screen. Kaya nilagay ko po para makita nyo rin sila. So also the Inter-Specialty Group Committee. Uh, chaired by uh, Eric Sison and the six specialty divisions of PICE, the Secretariat, and to everyone out there, cheers and congratulations to us all for the success of this webinar. 
We have finally reached the end of our webinar lecture series. But as what Director Season have said, this is not the end of PICE's webinars. No? This is actually our pilot one and just the beginning and patikim. No? And uh, we are very grateful and happy of the positive responses from our members worldwide. Though we still have some areas to improve, but at least this webinar brought us opportunities to learn, to adjust to the new normal, and to eventually succeed together as civil engineers and as an organization. Also, as we are in the new normal, PICE is really supporting online learning platforms and the call of government for social distancing and a no-no to mass gatherings. With that, our future regional technical conferences, seminars, and gatherings will already be conducted online until the government would allow us again the conduct of mass gatherings. Thus, our scheduled 2020 National Media Convention in General Santos City this June is canceled. No? And, but uh, hopefully, we can already conduct our 46th na annual national convention this year and if the situation would already permit. And uh, also just this morning, I received a call from the chapter president of the USA chapter, Engineer Gurley Borboor, the host of the 2020 International Technical Conference scheduled this August 1 to 3, 2020 in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, she informed me that the International Technical Conference will be postponed, will be postponed tentatively to May 2021 or May of next year. So just wait for further announcements regarding all our uh, conventions, all our technical conferences and seminars. Also, Dina mentioned ni Eric, please don't forget the membership information update campaign. Log into the link provided in our PICE Facebook account, the pages and the website, uh, or you may contact your chapter officers. No? And just update your personal profile in our membership database. So that, uh, as I've said, we can serve you better. We can contact you anytime. No? So, alam nyo na, we are now on uh, online. No? So, uh, please be counted and register. Uh, lastly, on behalf of the PIC National, you know, the Board of Directors, thank you very much. Let us always remember to be holy, healthy, and happy. Value the learnings and the blessings that our Almighty has bestowed us today and every day of our lives. Let us always be proud to be a Filipino civil engineer. Mabuhay ang PICE, mabuhay po tayong lahat. And again, thank you and stay safe. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hi, hi Malu. Hi, Lawrence. Hi, hi Doc Aldrin. Hi, Sir Adam. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Adam, sir. Thank you very much, Ms. Mong. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, Mom. Thank you to all the board. Yeah, thank uh, you. Stay safe. Thank everyone. you. Rani, Randy. Bye. Thank you, Randy. Hi, Rani. Yeah, stay safe. Okay. Stay safe. Stay safe.